Welcome back to Church Starts News, your destination for Christian arts and entertainment. I'm Nicole Newman here with an up-close interview with Fred Hammond. Well, we recorded the interview and after the interview was done, I get in ready to start the editing process and I had no sound. Well, here at Church Stars, we know how to make amazing lemonade. So I'm just gonna have the interview with no audio playing in the background so y'all can see that I really did it because church folks, you know, um, y'all like to check receipts. So we got the receipts playing in the background. So the amazing Grammy Stellar Dove Award winning gospel icon, one of the most recognized names in the music industry, lyrical mastermind, the soundtrack to my childhood, Fred Hammond, I sat down to talk to him about his upcoming stage play series called Surviving Williams, which is coming out tomorrow that you can go to his Instagram and buy tickets to. Well, before we get into it, let's take a look at a clip. Sam Williams, and this is my lovely wife. Deborah Williams. Okay, it's not Saturday. That's the only problem with it. But maybe the Lord will bless me. We get ready to play butt naked Bible trivia. Come on, come on, come on. We're just a regular family. Do not address me by my government name. Her name is Squirrel Pants. <laughs> 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 That's right, baby. Don't miss episode two, Surviving Williams. My family needs prayer. Wow, I cannot wait to watch that episode. Mr. Hammond shared how God laid on his heart to share with us what it's like to go through um, COVID in this episode, the things that the families face, um, and the insurance won't cover, you know, how he had to put his affairs in order, even you know, down to possibly having to plan a funeral and then what a family might have to do if they have to raise money. So all of that will be seen in this episode. I asked him what, because if you know Commission and Fred Hammond, Radical Go For Christ and everything that he's done in music, his lyrics are part to none. He is a lyrical genius. And so I asked him what the writing process would be like for him and to my surprise, he doesn't really type or anything, but he, he speaks them into a memo and then has them translated on paper. So that's his writing um, process. Um, that was interesting. I also asked him about his upcoming film that he's been working on for a few years called The Choir. Um, and he described it as Greenleaf meets Empire meets Power. Lord have mercy, I cannot wait to see that. And he shared how in this movie that he is going to be keeping it real, he's completely uninhibited with his storyline. And I asked him, you know, are you concerned how some of the church community might react to um, the film, keeping it all the way real? And he just said, you know, I did do, I was the one that did Radical for Christ. And you know, he stirred things up back in the day. He was responsible for creating the era of praise and worship music. So when the choir comes out, we are going to be keeping y'all up with the latest because this sounds like it is going to be really good. Now, near the end of my interview with Mr. Hammond, I really want to call him Uncle Fred real bad. But anyway, um, we gave away tickets to one of his biggest fans to see the show tomorrow, Surviving Williams, episode two. His name is Jordan. His mother, Sherry, told me how he goes around the house sharing Fred Hammond facts. So Jordan is a real fan. We gave him tickets to see the show tomorrow, and he just wanted to say a few special words to Uncle Fred. <laughs> Here we go. Hi, my name is Jordan, and I'm so excited to win tickets to see Surviving William starring Fred Hammond. Hammond, I, I am a huge fan of his because I play, play one of his songs, Clean Heart. And I hope he does an amazing job, job because I actually saw him in the gospel movie. And I hope he does really well. 
See you later. I also forgot to share this story with um, Uncle Fred again. I hope I can call you that. Anyway, I wanted to tell him this story. So, um, in about 91, he came out with the commission came out with State of Mind. I was number seven. I'm not sure. It was State of Mind. Anyway, so I had my little answering machine and um, Everlasting Love. And Everlasting Love was kind of sexy. So, it had the saxophone. Dun, 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 dun. So on my answer machine, I would say, hello, this is Nicole. I'm not here at the moment, but if you leave me a message, I'll call you back. So I just wanted to share that funny story with him. You know, I had commission on my answer machine and I thought I was being kind of cute. Well, folks, that's it. I was completely devastated after I did the interview and it had no sound because for me, growing up a church kid, you know, my, my household, we were really strict. We couldn't listen to secular music. So I was sneaking and listening to it at school. So, you know, I grew up on like um, Andre Crouch and Danny Bell and Rand Selling and the Clark Sisters. But when my parents brought home a commissioned record, I finally had something that was kind of like the R&B I had been sneaking and listening to and something that I could bump. So, you know, growing up late 70s, 80s, early 90s, well, high school in the 90s, well, graduated early 90s. Anyway, this was like interviewing Michael Jackson to me because he was just that much a part of my childhood. So I said, you know what? I'm not gonna lose this interview. So I encourage you, if something like this happens, you know, get your panic out the way and just move forward and make it work. So we hope you enjoy the lemonade today. Keep it locked right here on Church Stars, your destination for Christian arts and entertainment.